what we do My here is go back, 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 back. All right, guys, hey, so we are post-event Norwalk Havoc. Um, definitely went better than last time. Not as good as mass destruction, but we didn't expect to be doing as good as mass destruction in a field of 70 beetle weights. So PGF uh, did much better than last time. You um, got two whole fights in. Yeah, and it actually worked at the end, which we'll get to. Um, so our first fight, which we know about a week in advance, was against Scrappy. Now, you're Scrappy competing against some of the best robots, like Voxel, who's currently pushing them around, but... Uh, just wait. Scrappy gets back in this matchup. So Scrappy is a two-wheel drive drum spinner. As they put it, they have a brick of S7 tool steel. Uh, and that was what kind of scared me. As you can see, they're delivering nice hits on Voxel there. Is the S7. So S7 is harder than AR500 even, which is what most people use on their weapons if they don't have access to like proper machining and heat treatment and stuff. And I was afraid that my weapon might snap. So I wanted to use... A shorter bar but we just felt like it couldn't pass safety you'll see it pop up on the screen here and yeah we had to go with the longer one and it was a little thinner there was some stuff material cut out in between so I was really worried about the weapon shattering that's not what ended up happening and you'll see in this fight what ended up happening we knew that we were gonna have this fight in advance the strategy was to maybe box rush them take off one of their wheels um, because actually later in the event Smee took off one of their wheels just by sheer contact so my weapon was in perfect position to hit one of them. I just couldn't do it. And yeah, let's see what happened in this fight. Uh, and then I'll break down the damage. Fight robots, fight! Well, this is a pretty dominant performance so far. Kyle, that bar is gone on PGF. The... And that's a tap out. Ooh, that's a definitely going to fail. Yeah, so like the announcer said, it definitely did fail. So the stream cut out at basically the two most important parts of the fight. Um, so basically what happened is I went in. Uh, and actually, before we talk about the damage, I just want to say uh, I cut this off because it was kind of painful to relive. But I got there and we put the wrong belt on. So basically our belt was a little loose and we were worried that that would come off in the fight. So we made one that had a tighter tension, but it turned out it didn't work. So it didn't work when we put it in the box and basically had this like two minute standoff with the event organizers. It's not a standoff, but they were talking behind the scenes with the people who run the live stream. And they're like, well, you guys can't swap it out. Even though, um, to be honest, it would have taken maybe 30 seconds. We just needed to take this nut off the top in a washer and then just switch out the belt and it's literally all that would have had to happen but it's fine um we couldn't do that so we put it in the box we knew we didn't have a working weapon so it wouldn't really matter anyways if it pulled out because it just couldn't spin and basically in here you can see there's a washer there but before there it was just this glued into this bulkhead down here which you can see it's made out of nylon you can see it's bolted in a couple places there and then there so the bulkhead wasn't the issue it was just the press fit, and next time I won't use a press fit to hold it in place. And we ended up fixing that for the second fight, which I'll get to, but that was the main damage. This thing pulled out, and that that's, you know, that didn't really matter because our weapon didn't work. Also, over here on the side, you can see this duct tape here. Uh, I put this here just as a joke because there was a duct tape robot that, like, somehow won a fight. Um, and you can see in there that's metal so basically later on in the day after we had taken so much damage we ended up putting an aluminum piece here because this got ripped clean off but this wasn't in this fight in this fight uh you can see this side over here this is nylon right uh, under here yeah this wall is still here so it's basically like this side it had a crack in it but there was two cracks and it was like starting to come completely apart and like the whole thing was like burgeoning upward so that was bad and i was like wow okay and i think that might have been because you see over here we have these screws here these are self-tapping screws that might have created more stress concentrations and i probably should have thought about that before drilling it in but either way they ripped um two of the screws out on the other side and the whole thing was kind of dangling to the right and that was just like two hits to the side at the end of the fight that you saw right before i tapped out uh, about BuddyBot, it was just having receiver issues. They sent us a shit receiver, so I have to get a new one. Um, and that was unfortunate because BuddyBot could have helped out, at least in our second fight. In our first fight, maybe not. Uh, in terms of internal damage, there actually was none. And that's a theme that we'll come back to later. But all my electronics were completely fine. Um, I think I tapped out at the right moment because I didn't get anything inside. The weapon motor was completely fine. Still is. 
And, uh, yeah, the only damage was really this pulling out and some stuff to the sides here. Uh, the forks held up fine, so I was happy with that. And, yeah, that's the damage from that fight. So then we headed back to the pits and fixed everything up. All right, so let me just show you what we did in the pits before the next fight. So here you can see we have a whole bunch of self-tapping screws. And under here, there's this washer that's holding this weapon shaft, which is what our bearing spins around in place. So we basically just put these down with washers to hold this washer in place we put this back in and glued it in obviously that doesn't do much but it does something so it's press fit now and then we've got the self-tapping screws on either side so it's not going to come out unless this whole thing fails i mean there's just no way you can pull this out or these screws get sheared but that's just not going to happen so it was held in place really well and we pretty much solved that issue with that next time we do this i'm going to do something like this but just build it into it so we can have screws that just thread in and hold a washer down on top of this and then it won't be able to come out uh, no damage to any of all my mounting stuff here. You can see where these motors are held in place. Uh, I have little pads of PLA+. Plus. These were completely fine the whole event. Again, no internal damage. Uh, I had I just swapped out the battery. Um, everything in here was completely fine. And, uh, yeah, we just made a new belt because I lost the good belt that I had somehow. It's something I do. I lose things very often. We did that. Uh, sanded it a little bit so it looked like there wasn't even a crack so it was really smooth and it would run cleanly um i forgot to mention in the damage that our top got like completely mangled you can still see a little bit here i had to hammer it down into place and the machinist who works at norwalk Cavic, who makes other cool stuff taught me how to actually properly hammer things into place so that was cool there's two there's you can see in between here these two bolts there's this there's that was originally where the top was screwed down with screws i, I kind of knew it was going to fail because be even before the fight when i was screwing it in the th things that they threaded into were wobbling and that's just bad design by me um but it wasn't supposed to be like that they were originally supposed to be through bolted to the top but uh the counter bores on the bottom didn't fit the screw heads in so i had to it's, it's a long story the point is those pulled completely out so i had nothing to screw into so we had to start and we did this throughout the event through bolting things through so we put these through and then we had these nuts over here that screwed into the top and that's how we held the top on for the next fight so the next fight so our next fight was against Torine, who also had troubles in their first fight they got murdered by silk who made it all the way to the semis of this tournament um, both were wpi bots so we were a little intimidated by that fact and their weapon wasn't working so we were hoping that their weapon just wouldn't work but i think they may have just lost their belt early on or something and they had it working so we knew it was going to be a tough fight but we thought maybe our weapon would be able to survive, and uh, yeah, this was a really fun fight, so now you guys are going to see what happened. Three, two, one, fight robots, fights! Taurine having a slow start, but they're moving, they're twitching, they're doing everything they need to do. And they are ripping the wedges. And into the drivetrain on PGF. This is pretty ridiculous. Let's see if Torian's able to get that, that side of its drive moving. I'm not sure why it stopped. It certainly wasn't anything that PGF did to it. But they are able to gyro around. Oh, there we go. A big chunk came out of one of the wheels there on Torian. Taurine, of course, is one of those ingredients in energy drinks that you probably shouldn't put into your body, but everybody does. <laughs> And we are seeing so much better weapon reliability from both of these robots in this match. Absolutely, yeah, these builders put in the work in the pits and it shows. And you can hear that spin up on Taurine, it is deadly. But unfortunately, they're still missing that side of their drive. Not a lot of controlled movement coming from them. They're able to crab walk, they're able to move around. Uh, and when that undercutter gets in on PGF, it does some big damage. You can see that side plate just ripped off. And it looks like PGF's weapon is completely down. Yeah, PGF, we've got one bot spinning in circles, the other bot not moving. We're gonna need to see some motion from PGF. We're getting a little bit still from Taurine. All right, here we go. The show motion bar has gone on. And that's a tap out. Tap out from PGF. Taurine moves on into the loser's bracket. 
Wow. Okay. Wow. So Taurine, moving on, PGF. Thank you so much for coming today. So this fight was really fun. It was just nice to see the robot like actually working. Um, our setup worked. The weapon actually never failed. What did fail was the pulley sitting on here. This is a different pulley that we put on after we wanted to go hunting for a grudge match at the end of the event. Um, but yeah, the, what actually ended up happening to our weapon in this fight is our pulley shattered um, on the weapon. So it just couldn't spin the belt anymore. Um, and that was unfortunate because we could have kept our weapon going. If we had kept our weapon going, there's a pretty good chance that uh, this whole side here wouldn't have been ripped clean off. And speaking of which, that's really the biggest damage we took in this fight. They ripped this whole side clean off. It was already shattered from our previous fight against Scrappy, but they really did a number on it. Um, and they also destroyed the bottom here. You can see there's a huge fault running through it. Um, yeah, that was pretty big. And then over here, you can see this wheel. This is the one wheel we left on. Um, needless to say, on this side, once they tore this off, they just shredded our wheels to bits, um, because we were still moving for a little while, um, and we had to change one of the wheels completely out. This is a new one. The old one was just, like, grinded to a crisp. So that's the big damage we took in that fight. And actually, what just stopped our weapon from working completely, um, and our whole robot, for that matter, is the battery like over volted and just stopped um i have no idea why that happened but the whole robot shut off and honestly all the speed controllers and stuff are fine um we plugged in a new battery and it was totally cool um we got a message on my charger that said there was an over voltage warning so i have no idea what that means um maybe we fucked something up in the battery uh, i i don't know um but that was the main damage the me was still intact the back used to say hit me um, but it didn't work anymore. So yeah, uh, also at the front, our wedgelets got torn to shreds. I don't even have the wedgelets. They weren't worth recovering because they were done. They actually failed before the, the wedgelet holders failed, but those obviously got ripped to shreds. And then down here, you can see they took chunks out of the armor. So yeah, a lot of damage taken in this fight, but it was just nice to see the robot working. Uh, the weapon, like the commentator said, was much more reliable. Um, had we had bulkier pulleys, would have probably kept spinning. Uh, had we had a battery that didn't overvolt, probably would have been able to stay in that fight. So, yeah, you know, I was pretty happy with the performance of the robot in this fight. This is how I wanted to see it working. And uh, it was just nice to to give these guys a run for their money. Um, when they said that wasn't anything PGF did, when their drive side went down, it actually was us. We uh, ripped their wheel to shreds, so that was nice. If only we'd caught that other wheel. Uh, could have won by knockout, but did not. Um, and even then we were close to knocking them out. Um, my, I had this argument with Will after the fight, uh, it wasn't anything heated or anything, but, you know, we were talking about, you know, maybe if I had left them, we would have won. I don't think so. Norwalk Havoc doesn't really count people out if they still have gyro ability and they were also crab walking. They were still immobile in my opinion. So I wanted to go in and maybe finish them off, but we didn't, uh, gave them a good run for their money though. And that was an awesome way to go out in the tournament. So I'm not complaining. Uh, and in the end, we did actually end up getting the whole robot working again, because like I said, the electronics were totally fine, so we just bolted this on, uh, put on a new pulley, and it was ready to go for a grudge match with a Luma Kid. but since he went actually pretty far into the competition, 4-2 and two is not bad at all, we did not end up getting to fight him, because we were hopefully gonna stick around and maybe if he went out of the bracket we were gonna fight him, but nah. The main things I want to change for the next iteration are durability, um, of, like stuff here, and weapon pulleys, I just need to make those bulkier. That's really all that it came down to there. Even if I had just made this bottom just a tiny bit more bulky, it would have been fine. Uh, it was just so thin. Yeah, so I just, next time I'm going to do it out of a combination of, I think most of the stuff on the inside is still going to be 3D printed. I'm playing around with the idea of a 3D printed base plate, but uh, all the outside is going to be maybe UHMW and metal, and it's going to be a more simple shaped chassis. So yeah. You didn't have to. Actually, yeah, I didn't because it was over one hit. So yeah, that's really it for this portion of the video. I mean, obviously, uh, you got to take a picture with Ray Billings, which was cool to me. Oh, I met Ray Billings. And he was basically yeah, our pit neighbor because yeah. he was two tables down from us, but the person in between us and him was, was literally, ne literally never there. Like, not at all. So we just had a clear view of Ray Billings and Tyler Wynn. And uh, you finally got the courage up right when we left to talk to Ray, so. Uh, I can die happy now. He really can. Um, so any any closing thoughts before we get to me breaking down the damage when I get home? Um, don't ever be afraid to meet somebody on BattleBots. Yeah, they're really nice. They are, like, Ray looks like he's a savage prick when, on BattleBots because he's, like, evil. 
in real life, he's a total sweetheart. As with all of the Battle Bots guys. Like Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Fabiani, Fabiani. From Speed, Brandon, P1. They're all great guys. So definitely come down to Norwalk. And Except Jameson Go, He's a little bit on the hothead side. Now, it's a joke. <laughs> But yeah, come down, system, come down to Norwalk. It's the best competition on the East Coast by far. Mass Destruction's fun too, but it's more of a laid-back event. And um, yeah, see you guys later. Bye!